Good afternoon, Tim Bond's office. Hi, it's Heather again. Thank you, Heather again. <laughs> Hi, Heather. Thanks for calling back. What's your email address? And I'm going to go ahead and record this for you, and I'm going to have Penelope send this out to you within 10 days. Okay, it's... Have you been with the meeting before? Yeah, I used to go to this one lady a lot, and um, I, she was... It was good at first, and then it started getting kind of stale, and she wasn't really reaching my son, and I just... I don't know. I, I, I've i seen your work, and I really just wanted to get in touch with you and see if you um, could possibly <laughs> get in touch with my poor freaking son. <laughs> Okay, sure. Where are you calling in today from? Where am I calling from? Yes. I'm calling from uh, San Francisco. Oh, okay. How did you hear about me? I heard about you online, um, and I've seen reviews about you on Facebook, and I just thought, he's got to be the one. Oh, okay. Uh -huh, okay. Well, let's go ahead and get started. We're going to do just a short meditation. Okay. And then after that, um, I'm going to explain just briefly how this works and how I work as a medium. And then after that, we're going to get started, okay? Okay. Okay, perfect. Okay, perfect, Heather. So just with your feet on the floor and with your eyes closed, but most importantly is making yourself as comfortable and relaxed as possible. Just imagine this golden ball of loving energy, what I call spirit's white light. And just imagine that ball of energy going to the bottom of your feet. Go past your ankles and past your calves. Continue to bring that ball of energy, spirit's energy, past your knees and thighs. All that your tall bones from the color of red. Any worries, any tensions, any fears. Just release those energies and just let them go away in you. Continue to bring that ball of energy to the spinal. It's the navel from the color of orange. And again, any worries, any tensions any fears, again, just release those energies and just let them go away in you. Continue to have all of energy or the heart area or the heart chakra turn the color of green. Any place in your life where there's lack of love or even absence of love, just replace those energies with love, with unconditional love and let all other energies go away in you. Continue that ball of energy of the throat area turn the color of blue. Anything that was said or wasn't said, any regrets of saying something or regrets of not saying something to someone, just release those energies, release those tensions. Give yourself permission and forgiveness and just let them go away now. And lastly, just take that ball of energy straight up the top of your head and as that ball of energy goes at the top of your head, just imagine it's turning into raindrops. It's going over your shoulders, over your back, over your chest, giving yourself a spiritual cleanse. Okay, perfect, Heather. And you can open your eyes if you haven't already have done so. And we'll go ahead and get started with the sitting here in just a bit. Okay. Heather, I always like to do that short meditation prior to every sitting, just to make ourselves more open, more receptive for spirit. And in today's sitting, when I refer to the word spirit, just those who have made that transition called death. And whenever I refer to the word transition, what I'm referring to is just going from that one doorway to the next. What I always like to tell my clients doing this work is just as much as you have chosen to, you know, walk the doorway that you are in today to place this phone call, that's been your choice. Mm -hmm. Same thing for me walking through the doorway that I'm in today to receive your phone call. You know, my choice, obviously. Mm -hmm. However, when we do make that transition called death, it really is none other than just going from that one doorway to the next. As I mentioned before, nothing more, nothing less. How I work as a medium is when I tend to look off to the left shoulder, the left side of you, many times that tells me that that person would appear on your mom's side of the family. When I look off to the right shoulder, the right side, that being your dad's side, your father's side, and then when I look directly behind you, um, that tells me that would be in the category of husband or wife, um, brother, sister, son or daughter or friend. And usually that's how I'm able to discern who's who when we when we do work like this. Sometimes the people that you 
tab, send the invitations, the thoughts out to. Sometimes they might come at the very beginning of the sitting, the middle, sometimes at the very end, but you know, at any rate, I will give you what I see and what I feel and what I hear. What I would like to do is go ahead and get started with the sitting, if that's okay with you. You have two people that are coming into the sitting. Um, we have one female, which is a uh, next generation female, which would be on your mom's side of the family. I'm almost wondering if it's not next generation, maybe it's just mom. Well, anyway, there's one woman who comes in on your mom's side of the family. We'll get with her um, right away. And then when I look directly behind you, there's actually one male that stands behind you. Um, so let's go ahead and get started, Heather, and let me go ahead and get started on you actually there's two women here. So there's actually two women on your mom's side of the family. For mom's mom, that maternal grandmother, you knew her better or you were closer closer to her than dad's mom, Heather? Yeah. So what's happening is there's two women that are coming through. We have mom's mom that's coming through mm -hmm. and she shows me that she was closer to you uh, or actually you were closer to her than, than dad's mom. And then there's also one of the women that comes in um, the other woman comes in mothering for you, but I, I don't know who that is. Did your does your mother have one sister who passed over? Uh, yeah, my mom had one sister who died. So what's happening is that we have a grandmother and an aunt who are coming into the sitting right now. Okay. And what I feel is the grandmother is coming into the sitting just to connect with you. The um, aunt, her daughter, is coming into the sitting to use you as a link to get to her family. Really? Yeah, that sometimes happens in sittings. Uh, no offense, I'm sure the aunt liked you and all, but um, it's just um, it's, it's just the aunt trying to use you as a link to get to her own family. But uh, the grandmother that comes in, she actually wraps her arms around you very, very tight. And when she hugs you really, really tight, she says, you tell her that I still love her. Oh man, that's that makes a lot of sense. You tell her that I that I still love her. No, oh, God. So, so this is a a woman who, not only does she express her love verbally, but she's also showing physical um, a, a, a attachment, physical hugging to you as well. Yeah, she and I were not always. You know, we were sometimes at odds. Um, but, um, like, I always wondered if she just didn't like me as much as, you know, as, as I loved her, like, I really loved her, but I didn't know if she cared the same thing about me. It was almost like I was a burden. I don't know. I just pick up that she hugs you really tight, and she says, you know, tell her I did, I did love her. Oh. And okay. she brings that through. And then, by the way, on a side note, Heather, you're a smoker. Yes. Yeah, you know, there's a, there's a, the male behind you would be a son for you because he just starts doing side talk and he goes, I really wish my mom would not stop. I wish my mom would stop smoking. I wish, I really wish my mom would not smoke. <laughs> yeah, he would uh, yell at me all the time for that. <laughs> so, and the thing that I, that I get when I look at him, and by the way, the two women, the aunt and the grandmother, they actually, um, step back just about a foot each to let him come in so I can actually start seeing him a little more clearly. But when I look at him, he has a more of a baby face on him. Yeah. He was my baby. Was he, well, was he 19 when he passed over? Uh, he was close. Close. Um, he was what was his age, please? 13. Oh, 13. Okay. Um, just one question. How old would he be today if he was still living? Gosh, um, he'd be, twenty-four. Oh, twenty-four. Okay. Just know that I, I look at his, his face, and he just has a baby face, number one, as I said before. Number two, he just shows me that he was in his teens when he died, so I thought he was 19 when he died. Um, so he's trying to show his baby face. He's trying to show me that he was in his teens. And then the other thing, what he's doing is he says, you know, my passing happened so quickly. He goes, everything happened very quick. Oh. He, was he in any pain? Now let me find out. 
Um, not physical. Um, what he shows me is just more emotional. Um, the emotional pains because, number one, he did not want to leave. Mm-hmm. And number two, he's trying to show me how quick things happen. It's almost like he didn't really see this coming. <laughs> I just don't want him to be in pain. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And then the other thing, um, uh, does the name of Ryan mean anything to you? Ryan. Or did he have a friend by the name of Brian? Ryan. Uh, he hung out with a lot of different kids. They were always coming over to the house, so... Oh, okay. Well, um, we'll come back to that in a bit. But he just shows me, like, like one of his friends, Ryan, or... Well, I think it's actually Brian. No, no, I think it's actually Ryan. But anyway, um, sorry for the confusion there, but he just shows me, he said, I have friends over here... And he goes, I really do miss my friends that are there. He goes, I, I really had good friends. Mm, yeah. The other thing he does is he wraps his arms around you, around the neck, and he gives a really tight hug from behind. <laughs> and what he's doing is he goes, tell her that she could not have prevented this. <laughs> and the thing that he's showing me is, is that at times you still feel that you could have prevented his passing. Um, and he's saying, no, this could not have been prevented. The other thing, um, anything to do with, like, motorcycles with him or anything to do with, like, I don't want to call it the desert, but, um, like, the dirt or outdoors, did he like, like, riding a bicycle on dirt, or did he have a motorcycle? Yeah, he used to go out in the back area behind our house. It was, like, a lot of trees. Uh, uh-huh. with his so friends. was that a motorcycle or a bicycle? Bicycle. Oh, okay. Like a, like he a... Shows me, he says that, he goes, he, he, those are some of his, his best memories. He used to go out and stay out there for hours. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he just shows me, he says, these are some of his best memories of being outdoors. And I get the tires on dirt, you yeah. know, or ground, not on asphalt or concrete. And he just smiled and he says, those are really good memories for me. <sighs> And he puts, places the hand right there on the left shoulder. And he goes, I just want to thank my mom for those memories, for providing those memories. <laughs> and, as, and, and besides the son and spirit, do you also have one son that's still living, Heather? Yes. Because he's looking around and he's talking about, where's my brother? I'm like, well, it's just your mom on the phone. And he goes, oh, he goes, tell my brother I miss him too. <laughs> Okay. So if you can get that across to your son and to say that his brother really does miss him, and he's also showing me that he's trying to help that brother. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Emery and he were really close. Oh, what's that, what's that now? Emery, his brother. One more time. Emery. Emery or Emery? Emery. That's the brother's name is Emery? Yes. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I didn't pick up the name. I just picked up the one brother that he just tries to show that, you know, even at times his brother still, you know, talks to him and still misses him. Wow. So he's getting that, getting that across, too. You know, there's one, two, three, wow, I think it's four. There's actually four dogs that are over there with your son. <laughs> Yeah. And this, is a message for, this would be a message for Emery. If you can get this across to Emery and say, hey, tell Emery that he has like four dogs and then he says, these are, he, these are his own dogs. Oh. He loved, he, your son loved dogs. Yeah, he did. Yeah, we've had dogs all our lives. But he showed me four that are over there, so I strongly feel that there are four that either you or him or both would have had connection with that died. Can you tell if there are any black labs over there? No, good question, though. I just know that there's four dogs, and your son is trying to show that. Okay. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And um, anything with the month of February, was that your son's birthday? Um, yeah, actually. Yes. Yeah, the son that passed over, the one I'm connecting with right now, was February his birthday. Yes. Okay. 
because he just shows me something about February, and he shows me, he goes, I want my mom and I want them to celebrate February. I don't want them to be sad. <laughs> I want them to be happy. I, I do not want them to be sad when February comes around. Okay. My birthday is so close to him, too, and and it's it's hard to celebrate my own birthday when his birthday was so close. Which is the 22nd of February? You're close, you're close to my birthday, which is... When's your birthday? The 26th of March. Now, when is his birthday? The 15th. The 15th of February. Yeah. Okay, I thought it was the 22nd, so I'm only, you know, seven days off. But in any event, he's talking about not your birthday, he's talking about his and February. Okay. Well, he, you know, yeah. he, he, <laughs> he always celebrated his birthday for a week. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe, perhaps, <laughs> perhaps. But um, he shows me that, that he is in school on spirit side and I said what type of school and he goes studying he goes I, I study over here I'm, I'm in school and I said do you like it and he goes oh yeah I like it very much and he shows me all the other kids that he's over there with I don't know what they're studying but he shows me that they get to study over there so he's not alone yeah he said that he studies with other kids over there oh. <laughs> and that's a good thing for him he just shows me that that this type of studying, because I don't really get in life that he was such a school person. <laughs> you know, so, you know, at Spirit Side, you might say, well, gosh, if he wasn't such a school person here, or education wasn't that important to him here, why would it be that on Spirit Side? Well, it's a different surrounding. Well, he didn't like school so much, but he did take um, karate. No, I'm not talking about karate, I'm talking about school. On Spirit Side, he's in school. When he was in body, he did not like it here in school. Oh. Well, he did mention that he one day wanted to be a teacher. That's fine, but when he passed over, he just shows me that he wasn't so into the school. Right. So this is going back to, you know, when he was just 13 or 14 years of age when he died, that he wasn't either into the, the school, like the actual the school, or the schools or schooling at that time, but he shows me that he's in school on spirit side. Well, that's good. I'm so glad. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. Oh. He said that he goes, I'm sorry for hurting you with my passing. He's saying that to you. <laughs> mm -hmm. It wasn't his fault. Well, he just shows me, he, he just tell her, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for hurting her with my passing. <laughs> And then what about Kevin? Who's, who's, I don't think it's Kelly. Who's Kevin? Kevin. Oh. You know? Uh. Kevin. Kelly or Kevin. So take a mental note of those two names that have come through. Um, yeah, just take a mental note of those two names, please. Okay. Kevin. And then why why does my what does my head hurt with your son? What happened with his head? <laughs> his accident was he was hit in the head with a softball. There's something here. My head hurts. It just looks like it's throbbing. And I said, why why are you impressing this throbbing on my head? And he goes, well, I'm just letting you know where the injury happened. Wow, he was hit in the head. He was hitting the temple. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what he's showing me right now as far as the um, the, the injury to head. <laughs> but I feel the pain in my body because he's letting me know where the injury happened. But he's showing me that he did not see this happening. There was no time to say goodbye, and he said there was no pain there. He could have never seen that coming. <laughs> So it's just his way of, um, of, of bringing that through. Um, uh, what were you going to ask? I was going to ask him if he remembers, because we managed to go on vacation 
like we've we've been saving up to go on vacation and right before he died we went camping and I was wondering if he remembers that Oh I'm sure he does. But I don't think of that yet. He's not talking about camping, he's talking about how he passed. Okay. And he's also trying to get more information across to Emery. Yeah. Um Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. Emery's so, a skeptic. He didn't believe me. He didn't believe one I. One more time. Emery's a skeptic. He didn't believe me. I believe you for what? Believe I could reach my son Andrew. Oh, well, the thing is that you might not be able to, but I can. Um, but your son is coming through really strong, and you know your one grandmother and your one aunt is still over there as well. <sighs> Thank it's a you. good thing. It's, and he's in good company. I'm so glad. He's actually, he, your son is actually a little sarcastic, too, because he looks over at the aunt and he looks at the grandmother and he goes, these people are, like, really old. What are they doing here? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, well, these are, I said, this is your mom's grandmother and this is your mom's aunt. And he goes, oh, okay, whatever. <laughs> He's not rude about it. He's just like, okay, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And the other thing, he shows me um, a bag of Dorito chips. And I said, what's with the Doritos? And he goes, he goes, let them know I can still eat chips over here. Really? Yeah, I think these are actually the regular Cool Ranch Doritos. I don't think these are just the regular Doritos. I think these are Cool Ranch. But in any event, they're Dorito chips. You're right. You're right. He liked the Cool Ranch Doritos. This is so crazy. And he starts, he starts to chop on these Cool Ranch Dorito chips. Wow. And, um, you know, starts like, you know, um, uh, you know, making mention of that he still gets to eat these and he still gets to, you know, um, uh, you know, have these over there with friends and he just keeps on smiling. <laughs> I want you to tell him to eat better for me. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Uh, well, the thing is, is that you know, when you're on spirit side, you can actually manifest whatever you want. And the thing is, is that it's not addictive or it's hurtful to your body. So these chips are not addicted to his body. <laughs> now, hold on for a minute. Um, um, you still have one of his bike bicycles? Oh, yeah. Because he says, he goes, they still have my bike. <laughs> And I said, is that okay with you? And he goes, yeah. He goes, I'm just really surprised they still have it. He goes, I like that bike. <laughs> I couldn't throw it away. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I know I probably wouldn't throw it away, but it would be more about, like, donating or letting someone else have it. But he's really happy that you still have it. Oh. <laughs> he loved that bike so much. Yeah, he just shows me. He says, if he's happy, he's going to have it now. That is true. He is happy that you still have it, but it's not his way of saying you still need to keep it. I and mean, if you want to still keep it, you're, you can still keep it. But if it comes up here that, like, I don't want this anymore or I don't have room for it or I actually like to give it to, like, my grandson or give it to, you know, my nephew and it feels right, then go ahead and do it. He's okay with that, but he's okay with you keeping it, too. <sighs> okay. I... I don't know if I could ever let it go. I, I, I'll I, probably keep it forever. Sure, that's fine. You can do whatever you want with it. But it's just his way of showing you still hold on to his bike. Um, now, he was not cremated, but he was buried. Yeah. Right. And then the father does not go to the grave site, but you do? Yeah. <laughs> Um, he just says that he he wants you to be more like his father, not go. <sighs> and let me explain. It's not it's not about as bluntly as I as I said that. Let me just show you what he's trying to show me. You know, his father has Andrew, your son Andrew, in his own mind, in his own heart at times. And the thing is, is that your son is inviting you to do the same. That you don't have to go. <laughs> To the cemetery, you can just do what Dad does. He said. <laughs> now, if you still want to go to the cemetery, you can. But he's just giving you permission, and at times encouragement 
to say, listen, you can do this all from your own home. I don't know. So, like I said to you before, you can do whatever you want. I'm just relaying the message from what Andrew tells me to tell you. Okay. And then, do you have gray hair above your ears? (laughs) Is your hair gray on the other side? Are you not coloring your hair? I know, I don't color my hair. I do have... Do you have gray above the, above the, or the temples or is it above the ears? It's a shock of gray on my temple. Yeah, okay, there we go. He, he just shows me, wow, my mom's got gray hair now. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I bet you he'd be making no. fun of me if he were here. What's that now? I bet you he'd be making fun of me if he were here. Well, he's he's making fun of you right now from spirit because he's like, wow, my mom's got gray hair. It's pretty funny. Uh. <laughs> so, just his way to bring you, bring you that through. Um, the other you. thing he showed me is like this, um, like his mac and cheese. He loves his mac and cheese. And the other thing he's talking about is, um, did he ever get into the Friday the Thirteenth movies? Um. Or the hollow, not only it's Halloween. He just shows me, like, like staying home on Fridays, Friday nights, and watching watching movies. Well, something about movies. Well, I don't know if he was a really big movie lover. I think must be the TV then, because he's just showing me Fridays, not going out, staying home, and I get the TV on. So if it's not you know movies of the week or just movies, it might just be regular regular TV. Oh. But the message with that is that he loved just being at home with all of you and just doing a lot of nothing. <laughs> yeah, we hung out a lot. We were really, really close. Mm-hmm. Just doing a lot of nothing. Yeah. <laughs> he also wants to get a message to his father, too. And... Um, but he shows me. He said, "I just want to. I just want to say hello to both of my parents." So he's bringing his father into this as well. Okay. And then your son places a hand on the heart, and he goes, "Mom, don't be angry at him, and don't be angry at people." And he said, "He says accept people the way they are." <laughs> right now, are you angry with his father? Yeah, I am a little angry at his father. But he doesn't want you to be angry at his father. It's almost as if he wants me just to get over it. Yep, that's why he places his hand on his heart and he goes, Don't be angry at Dad, get 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 past this. <sighs> I've been trying so hard to reach him. One more time, please. I've been trying so hard to reach him. Oh, um, like through meditation, you mean, or just through other people, or what? Through other people, uh, dreams. I've been having dreams about him, but it's almost like he's so close, but I can't quite reach him. Oh, okay. Well, he comes across very clear to me. Wow. He's a very good communicator. <laughs> very, very good communicator. Just I, I just wish he, I could talk to him again. Well, the thing where there's one problem here with that communication or lack of communication is that you're not doing any meditation to be receptive to him. And if you want to make these dreams more clear, you're going to have to have more, or not more, but you have to incorporate meditation into your daily life plan. And you're not doing that right now, and that's fine that you're not, but if you want to have more clear dreams and you want to connect with them at times more clearly on your own, you're going to have to do the meditation. Yeah, uh, meditation is hard. My brain is all over the place. (laughs) Well, what I tell my clients here, Heather, is that if you can just go out and get a, you know, a digital stove timer. Uh Uh-huh and set that digital stove timer for 20 minutes and keep your eyes closed and concentrate on the breath, you know, 
10 seconds in or so, hold it for 10 seconds and exhale for 10 seconds or so. Okay. That if you can do that for 20 minutes every single day, it'll make a whirlwind of difference. Okay. Now I will try. I will try anything to get in touch with my son again. And then, um, you have actually right now one, only one dog at the house right now? Uh, well, one is mine. The other one's not officially mine. Did your son know either one? No. Okay. Well, the dog that he shows me just feels like this is more of like a larger dog. Uh-huh. Um, I'm not going to say, um, a shepherd, but it just feels like more of a, a, a bigger dog. We had two black labs. What do you have right now? <laughs> Far from black labs. Chihuahuas. Oh, both of black labs. Oh, okay. Well, um, yeah, so he's just showing me um, this one dog. I, it might be yours, might be this one. I don't know, but he just shows me. He says, I, I love that dog. So this, there's this one dog that he really does love. Wow. We've had many dogs over the years, um, but... I can see that because there's four of them that are over there with them, so I can definitely see that. Yeah. Um, he's showing me this burger. What's the burger about? Hold on for a second. I don't know what it is. It, was there like a certain burger shack that he used to go to all the time or... I mean... Down here in Southern California, we have like what is like the In and Out Burger, but I don't know what it is for him. But he just shows me this. anything to do with like a like right around the corner, like a burger shack that he used to go to. Well, he used to eat Burger King a lot. Okay, that's fine. Is Burger King right around the corner from where he lived? Not too far. Not too far. Okay, so so he would you guys or he would go to Burger King quite often? Yes. He was always eating those french fries. <laughs> That's fine. He just keeps on showing me this burger, this burger shack or this burger joint. Hmm. And I asked him, I said, what is that, what is that all about? And he just shows me, he goes, those are just very happy memories. Hmm. He said, they're really happy memories. And he just shows me, he did that, you know, after the burger, that, you know, he would actually come home. So this would be like, eat and then come back home. Yeah. And what he's doing is he's saying, eat them. And this is for you. Heather since you're the mother but he said you tell my mother how much of a good mother she was to me <laughs> thank you <laughs> he's very clear on, on saying and mentioning how much of a good mother that you are and what he's wanting you to do is he really wants you to focus a lot of attention on, on the other son. And then, um, it was, is there also one female cousin that was like a sister to him? Yeah, we had a big family. Well, let me ask you this question. Did your son leave one sister behind? I don't think it's a sister. I think it's a cousin who would like a sister. Uh, that's very possible. Well, in any event, um, he's trying through you to get to this, I think, female cousin who was like a sister. But in any event, he just shows me going to this Burger King, which is, you know, some of his some of his best memories. Oh. <laughs> Those were some of his best memories, and that's what he's trying to bring through and saying, hey, thank you. Oh. Um, is, did they plant, um, the city, or did you guys plant a tree in his name? <laughs> and if not, why is he talking about this tree, how big this tree's getting? Uh, you know? Last summer? You might want to think about that. The summer? You might want to think about that later. The summer before he died? Um, we were planting trees in the front yard. 
Okay. Are you still in that same home? Yeah. Okay. Are those, is that tree a lot bigger now? Yeah. <laughs> so there's something about trees, and I thought it was a tree or trees that were planted in his name, and it's like, no, Tim, they weren't planted in his name, but, you know, he was there when we planted them. Right. <laughs> So he's really bringing that through about that tree or the trees that have now gotten so big. Um, he's also showing me the things of his that you still hold on to. He says you don't have to hold on to these anymore. Um, these are some of his clothing items. Yeah. And he shows me because my mom, you know, hasn't let go of my clothes. And he goes that she doesn't need them. I don't care about them anymore. It's okay to let these clothes go. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it's fine. It's just his way of giving that message to you. You can do whatever you want with it, but, you know, that's his way of giving that to me to give to you. Okay. Thank you. Oh, well, yeah, you're welcome. <sighs> um, regarding the holiday that's coming up here, I don't, think, I don't think it's Thanksgiving. I actually think it's more of a the Christmas holiday, but in any event, he says, I, I really want them to celebrate it this year. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be tough. But, I mean... <laughs> I really want them to celebrate it this year, so he's really bringing that through. Are you separated from his father? Um, no, no. Are thought about it. Spending... <laughs> Sorry? Thought about it. <laughs> you said you thought about it? Yes. Oh, so he's just showing me, he says, Mom, he says, you, you got to open your heart up to Dad. He says, don't be angry at him. He says, it's, it's pulling your energy down. Yeah. I try that patience. <laughs> well, maybe this husband is a, a lesson for you to have patience. Yeah. That could be very well what it be, could be. <laughs> But he doesn't like how you're holding on negative energy towards the husband. Uh, um, was there a baby that was born to one of his friends lately or recently in like the last the last six months? Was there a baby that was born in the family? Uh, a baby girl to be exact? Uh, um, we've had Think about that later yeah. to find out who, who has a baby girl. Okay, we've had a few babies. Um, who had a few babies? Um, my sister's, um, my sister's friend had a baby. Uh, it would be, I feel it would be something connected to your son or connected within the family. I don't think since your friend would really cut it, in my opinion. Yeah. But in any event, I, I really do know it's baby. I think it's baby girl. But he just shows me, he goes, I, well, I'm really happy for them. Huh. I actually think it might be more for one of his friends. So you might want to ask your living son um, if, you know, one of their friends or one of his friends recently had a baby. Yeah, okay. So, yeah. But he goes back to the day of his passing, and he just shows me, he goes, you know, he goes, I was having so much fun that day. Yeah, I bet he's out with his friends. And he's having so much fun that day, and he just looks around and he shows me it was really the perfect day. Yeah. Yeah. I had no idea what was happening. Was this about 3.30 that this happened? Oh, it was in the afternoon. It just feels like about 3.15 or 3.30. It just felt like it was more like mid-afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> so, getting back to what we talked about earlier, um, there was no pain there. Oh. Okay, good. 
I just, I just don't want him to be in pain. He wasn't then, and he's still not now. Okay. He's showing me that there, there, are, uh, there are books that you have that you haven't read yet. <laughs> And he says, Mom, what's the point of buying these books if you're not going to read them? <laughs> so he's really inviting you to, you know, really push this through and, and start reading these books. I have a pile of books on my bedside table. <laughs> uh, what book did you buy? Um, I'm really into those kind of you know, silly love romances and, uh, mm -hmm. that's good. They're well, just, you said, you said read them. You, you bought the books. Well, you you got to read them. They're just so stupid and so goofy, mm -hmm. <laughs> but I like them and I just, I haven't, I haven't touched them. Yeah. <laughs> what I want to do right now is I want to open up to any questions really on anything that we have or haven't talked about today with anybody who has or hasn't come in. Uh, I, I just also wanted to ask him if, you know, we had a, a really big disagreement uh, and after he died, I just felt so bad because I wouldn't let him go somewhere he wanted to go. And he just seems so upset with me. Mm. Yeah. Nothing comes up with that at all. And even as you mentioned that he shakes his head, no, he's not that sad. He goes, she was a good mother. Right? And then he starts to smile and he goes, no, oh, she was a great mother. He talks about these pizzas, how you guys used to go for these pizzas. <laughs> and then the other thing he's talking about is he just shows me, he goes, she always made it fun for us growing up. He goes, even when it was boring, boring when it was raining, he said, she always made it fun inside for us. <laughs> so it's really quite the opposite of what you're feeling. Um, and he's just showing me, he goes, absolutely not, I'm not upset with her. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sorry anyway. <laughs> yeah, and he sees that. He knows that, but there's nothing really to apologize for. <laughs> and then, is there any talk about you wanting to go to Florida, Heather? <laughs> um, I was talking about making a trip down to the East Coast. Uh, which part? Just, I don't know, a road trip. Oh, okay. I, I wanted to, like, just put the family in the car and go. Sure. But, it's um, just... Yeah, I don't know. I mean, you're, you're on the West Coast, and he's talking about Florida. I think this might be something that you, uh... I don't know. It could be anything, really. <laughs> Maybe Disney, Disneyland. Well, I was thinking that Disney World down there. I, I was thinking that could be it, but I I don't know. <laughs> yeah. But any event, there's something with Florida coming up with you, and he just shows me that he'll be there with you or you guys when you go to Florida. <laughs> okay. Um. Yeah, any other questions? Uh, I, my head's just spinning right now. Um, When's the last time that you had a sitting with a medium? How long ago? Oh, uh, it's been probably six months. Oh, okay. Did he come in the strong with the other medium? No, not at all. She just kept talking about other people. Oh. Yeah. Like this person is, you know, around you and that person is around you and I'm like, I, uh, 
I really like you're a little you're scaring me a little but I really want to you know see if I can contract contact Andrew so it was so on today's sitting he comes in very very strong he's a very good communicator and there's nothing wrong over there with him he also mentioned that you know quite a few years from now when you make your transition he'll be there greeting you but as he mentioned that's going to be as he mentioned, that's going to be quite a few years until that happens. <laughs> I just want to see no, him I mean, again. When you do make your transition, you know, Andrew will be there greeting you, but he just shows me that there's there's still quite a few more years in the body for you. <laughs> so, I mean, that's the good news. Um, but, you know, you just have to hold out in this body here. You know, this, the thing is, is that you know, your other your other son and, and family, at least what Andrew showed me, really need your need your help. They need your love. You need to focus on on that family now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I guess I uh, have. I, think that's, I guess I have I, kind I, of I, been. I, I, yeah, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I guess I have been kind of. I don't know, obsessing or. Um, I don't think it's obsessing. I just think that you haven't just been so attentive to. The, the family, husband and, and also Emerson. Um, so it's just Andrew's way of saying, you know, this is the time now to you know, start focusing back on dad and focusing back on, on on Emerson. Yeah. And so it's fine. It's just, you know, it's kind of like a, you know, a car that starts going down the road. You know, we're driving down and doing a road trip. And it's, sometimes we kind of like, you know, veer off about a foot and we start hitting the median and it starts to, make that funny bumping sound. It's like, oh, we better just turn the wheel a little bit and get back on track. That's all it's been for you. Oh, yeah, this has been a big uh, roadblock. And that's what Andrew showed me. Is that he is, I'm just trying, just trying to help to turn her wheel. You know, so she can get just a little bit more focus again. That's all it is. Yeah. That's all it is. So it's nothing bad. It's just, we're just going to put you back on course here. Oh, it's it's hard. Mhm, mhm. Yeah, I know it's very difficult. Losing a child is the hardest thing, really, anybody will ever have to go through this planet. It's more difficult than losing a parent and a sibling. Um, and you know, and losing Andrew is is not only just losing a a a son. I mean, losing Andrew was also like losing a best friend because that's what he <laughs> has was to you. Yeah. Yeah, and the thing is, is that, you know, um, between Andrew and Emerson, I mean, both kids are really good kids, but the thing is, is that uh, there was a connection between you and Andrew. Yeah. So, I mean, not only did you lose your child, but you also lost the best, lost the best friend, too. Yeah. He was my kind baby. Of like a whammy for you. Yeah, it's, it's and crazy. And that's why it makes it a little bit more difficult, you know, um, than a parent who just loses just, I don't want to say just a child, but a parent who loses a child. <laughs> mm-hmm. Have you been to any compassionate friends groups or have you heard of compassionate friends? No, what's that? Um, compassionate friends is a support group. Um, uh, for parents who've lost um, children. And that's what I would suggest you kind of Googling that in, in your area, finding that. But all it is is a support group for, for parents who've lost children. Because, you know, I have never lost a child, so I can't say to you I, I know exactly what you're feeling and what you're going through. It would be a complete insult to you. But being around other parents who have lost children, there really is an understanding and there's really a, 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 a healing and acceptance with that. So that would be my suggestion with that. <laughs> okay. I... That would be my suggestion with that. <laughs> okay. And the meditation. <laughs> uh, and meditation, yes. <sighs> uh... And meditation, absolutely, yes. <laughs> Does he say anything else? 
Um, no, he's um, he's actually stepping back. <sighs> um, and uh, nothing. He's not saying anything more about this. Wow, I mean, this is amazing. Well, what we'll do right now, we're just going to do just a just a closing meditation, and then at the end of the meditation, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, speak this a little bit more to you at the end of the uh, end of the meditation. Okay. Okay. All right. Perfect. So just put your feet on the floor, your eyes closed. Imagine spirits, white light, coming from the top of your head down towards the forehead, down towards the heart. Continue bringing that ball of energy down towards the navel and lost the tailbone. And at this time, in your own mind, just give thanks for those who did come through and giving dates and places and love for really it's with their love this all works. And with that being said, take that ball of energy on past the knees and past the calves, stretch the bottom of your feet and back on the bottom of the earth. Okay, we're off recording right now, Heather, and I'm going to go ahead and, and get this, um, uh, you know, uh, email, uh, actually emailed out to you within 10 days. Penelope will send this out to you. Um, if you ever want to have another, you know, sitting with me in the future, that's totally fine. You can call back whenever you wish. Just know I have about a, a three-month waiting list. Um, and if you don't mind, you know, maybe you can write a little comment on, on Facebook if you like the experience today. Okay, I will do that. Perfect. Do you have any other questions for me? Uh, no. I just, I just miss them, no. you know. Sure. And, you know, when you do start doing the meditation, you'll be able to start connecting with them on your own. But perhaps we'll speak again soon, and you can call Penelope any time to book your appointment. Okay. I would love to talk to you again. Yeah, sure. That's fine. Okay. Well, we'll talk to you real soon. And also, if you have any other friends, we're trying to get Facebook likes up. So maybe if you have other friends, um, encourage them to like me on the Tim Braun Spiritual Medium. I I will Facebook. do that. Thank you so okay. much. You take care, Heather. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You're welcome. Bye-bye now. Bye. Bye-bye.